Hello everyone and welcome back to Pokemon Fire Red. Uh, we're currently in the Sylphco headquarters and I have last episode shown you how to very quickly get the card key which you need to access pretty much everything in here. Um, well you can access a lot of it without but it just makes it a lot easier. Um, so I'm just now going to basically go through the entire dungeon in this and probably the next episode as well. Hey kid, what are you wondering here for? Oh, I still didn't change my uh, Charizard to the... Um... To a different position. Like, I didn't change my first Pokémon, is what I meant to say. Okay, that's a dead Golbat. He probably has more Pokémon, right? Yeah, he does. Oh, a lot more actually, that's nice. And... yeah. Um, as I said, these are going to be optional episodes. I thought first... Uh, like my first idea was to record it and speed it up and just put some music under it but um, putting music on YouTube videos is always problematic at the best of times plus um, I don't know I thought maybe some people would like to see where everything is and if I speed it up you would not be able to really see where I get certain items and all that so um, And now I'm going to change my Pokemon around. So I decided instead to just make it into optional episodes and basically anyone who wants to see all this can see it all and anyone who doesn't uh, can just skip over it and uh, no harm done. The gimmick of this place is that you're, you're not meant to find the card key that quickly, it's just I happen to know the fastest route to it. But um, there's a lot of teleporters in here, which teleport you to a different location in the building. And those make it a bit of a nuisance to explore this place. Because you keep being sent to places which you don't know where they are, because... At least in the original, I'm not sure if it's changed here. Let's actually check that in a moment. Um, it, did, it didn't tell you which floor it sent you on, it just kind of teleported you about. Uh, this room has one, okay. Let's just use this. Okay, so okay, so this actually does tell me which floor it sends me to. That's somewhat nice. Oh, let's also talk to this lady. Um, I mean, that was somewhat mean, but she thinks I'm a rocket, so she's scared, but I'm actually not one, so to apologize, she's offering to teach me Thunder Wave, but I don't really want Thunder Wave on any Pokemon, so... Uh, let's go for this room next. He pretends to be a self-employee, but he's actually not. Um, basically, Team Rocket have brought in their own scientists, apparently. And... he's... He might very well have those Magnemite Pokemon as well, in which case I'll have to change, but otherwise... Um, I'll just stick to using Pidgeot until he's leveled up. And as you've seen in the last episode, I could have gotten T a lot earlier than I did. Um, this is not really an issue, it's just... It doesn't really matter which order you do this thing, these things in, but... Um, because of that, there's multiple areas of the game which are sort of off the same level, as you can see here, and fighting level 26 Pokémon. You're probably meant to do this before um, going to uh, Fuxia City. But... It, it, it's, there's not much of a difference, so... Um, it's not like I did any sequence breaking or anything like that. I actually find that this place, or the way to access this place, 
is still somewhat difficult to find and somewhat hidden. So if you didn't know where to get the tea, you might spend a fair amount of time trying to look for a way into this city. Because most of these other places which were you couldn't access, you would eventually basically be forced to find the tool or the, uh, the skill required to enter it. Like when you couldn't go to through the rock tunnel to uh, Lavender Town because there was a tree in the way, you would eventually, just by going through the game, uh, you would be forced to learn, uh, well, you would be forced to get the uh, a gem cut, and you would be forced to learn uh, how to use it outside of combat, which is, I believe, the second gym. So there's no way around it, you would eventually learn how to cut down those trees, whereas with a T, you could kind of... The same thing within the old games where you... Um, um, where you had to get the stuff from the vending machine. Maybe a little more intuitive, because at least the vending machines you kind of come across in a slightly more natural fashion, maybe? Just by trying to see what's, what's, or not, what's for sale in the, in the big shop. But, um, yeah, it's just, I'm not sure if the game ever gives you any solid hints as to where you could get the tea and then that's, and uh, that that is the item you need to move on. Because you can skip Saffron City, it's, uh, there's one, one of the gyms is here and you do need all of the gyms in the game to progress. Uh, is there anything in here? No. Okay, so I believe that's this level somewhat done. Yes, it is. Okay. So, instead of going to the third floor next, I will take a slight detour and go to the ninth floor. And as you can see, that's 11 in total. Uh, well, the first doesn't really count. It's the ground floor where nothing really happens, but it's 10 floors of trainer battles and all sorts of nastiness. And I think I have one or two guys left to fight um, before I can show you what I want to show you because they at least put in a healing opportunity into this uh, huge dungeon so you don't have to go out and um, visit the poker center every time you need a heal. And I'm really surprised I didn't remember to use berries to get rid of my paralysis. Oh dear, now I'm confused as well. That does not bode well. So the way being paralyzed and being uh, confused at the same time works is... You first have to pass your confusion test, and if you fail that, uh, you hurt yourself. So you cannot get the paralysis as in not having an effect from your attack, basically. You can't get that when trying to hurt yourself. That will always succeed, basically. But after you've successfully passed the confusion test... Uh, oh, this is not going to do very much, is it? You then also have to pass the paralysis test, so... It's uh, kind of a massive handicap to have both of these effects on you at the same time. Level 53, that's nice. So how about we change to Dragonite just because we can. I don't think we've seen him in action yet. Nope, doesn't have any experience. And we are going to wing attack. Well, that was nice. Of course, leveling up Dragonite uh, further is going to be a bit of a pain, simply because it takes a long, long time, but... Yeah, it is worth it. It's really, really cool Pokémon. Uh, paralysis is a Cherry Berry. I do like that the stack size for berries is not is not capped at 99, that's pretty nice. And we can talk to this lady here to basically give us a poker center effect. Just like in um in the Pokemon Tower, it's basically a convenience thing they added to a convenience feature so that you don't have to 
go and visit the Poké Center all the time. And as I said, I'm not going to go through all these rooms because of the card key. There's basically no locked doors in my way. And I will handle all the standard stuff in here first. And then probably maybe next episode, maybe the one after, depends on how it goes. Um, I will do the actual story progression in this place because there is story in here. Um, but since I am quite powerful enough and um, I have the card key now, I could basically hurry straight to that and just deal with it. We have a rival fight coming up and... Um, oh dear, we're getting poisoned. I hate that. And there's no real way to avoid the first poison tick. As soon as you get poisoned, the first damage tick already occurs, so... It's a bit tedious, but we will obviously change Pokémon... Uh, Gengar... He does no strength, so I guess I could use Gengar. Um, obviously all of his ghost moves are not going to do anything against a Raticat. But strength... It's not a ghost move. But I guess he does have arms, so Gengar, for some reason can use strength. It's kind of cool. You can also use Rock Smash and he might learn some, he might be able to learn some of the other, other uh, fist attack things. Uh, cure Poison, Pekka Berry, or Petra, 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 hmm, maybe Petra. Are you a trainer? No, you actually do work for Sylphco and you don't know what to do. Just stand back and let the other, uh, well, let the children handle it, I guess. I was gonna say leave it to professionals, but I'm definitely not a professional. And here we get a Hyper Potion. And you're an enemy, right? Yep. So, I don't think it's ever specifically stated in any way. These might be scientists that Team Rocket has brought in. Or they might just, as it sounds in the case of this guy, they might have just decided, you know, it's better to go with um, Team Rocket than with uh, Sylphco. Let's see what Hydro Pump does. It should probably be less effective because I'm attacking an electric type. Actually, it doesn't matter, apparently. That's cool. Uh, Weezing. Go for it. Let's see what Surf does. I should have the same type attack bonus on Surf, so it should be more powerful than my Bite. It's nice. Okay, no need to use the Teleporter. I am now able to access everything without the Teleporter. So I can be much more methodical about this. Um, I really dislike using the Teleporters because they kind of put you all over the place and... Uh, the way I'm doing it now, I can just do one level after the other. And each level by itself isn't that big, so... It might be possible to do this all in one episode. It might be a very long episode, but... The good thing about uh, this is that... There's no point recording in any hi anything higher than the 4 HEP resolution I'm doing. Um, basically, if I, if I blow up the window, which I could, I could do this in full screen 1080p. Um... Oh, Hydro Pump was not what I wanted. I wanted to go for Surf, but anyway. Um, but all that would do is it would make the emulator render the video feed to a higher resolution. But it doesn't actually provide any extra pixel data, because the game only offers so much. It, it doesn't even offer 480p technically, this is already blown out of... Uh, blown beyond the sort of resolution of the uh, original console's screen. Uh, the point is, YouTube. Lo when you full screen this on YouTube, it'll basically look the same as if I full screened it. The only difference being that I can down, I can upload a video that's much smaller, without actually losing any uh, any quality. And so that's uh, that's why I don't mind long videos. 
For some games, especially the ones that I record in 1080p, because they actually support that resolution natively, um, if I make those 45 minutes long or so, they would be huge. We're talking gigabytes of data here, and my um, my upload speed isn't that great. So it would take a long, long time to upload uh, hour-long 1080p videos. Whereas with the 480p, firstly, obviously, it's much easier to render them, because, well, rendering a 480p video is faster than rendering a 1080p one, obviously, less pixels to process. And um, uploading them is also much faster, so six, seven hours of, of Pokemon are, in terms of video size, maybe comparable to about an hour of uh, stuff like Divinity Original Sin. I do not want to change Pokemon. So that's really... Um, I should have probably changed Pokemon, actually, but never mind. Psychic should be powerful enough. And we have gotten a level up, actually. Which means it would be s time to change, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay. So let's open this door next. A full heal. This is kind of like a storage room, so there's a fair amount of items close together. Max Revive, I think there's a rare candy here as well, if we go on. Or not. Just this guy who's hiding away. I think there's a rare candy somewhere in here, in the complex, but... I don't know where. Anyway, who are you? An enemy. Fair enough. With an electrode. I think that's just electric, it doesn't have any other types, so Shadow Ball should have an effect. Yeah. Nice. Okay, I think that's this level done already. We're only at about 17 minutes and we're already getting quite far, so let's do this. Um, I'm not sure what range this rocket has, but um, I think another way you could get to the card key is by going past this guy. Um, but his aggro range might be too short for that, I don't remember. Um, I seem to recall it is, otherwise I guess that would be a faster way, but yeah, I, I don't remember. Um, just go down here. So this is... oh, trainer. Uh, but yeah, the corridor below me, where, where the plants are standing, is where you get the card key. So if you could have gotten that rocket that I just fought earlier, to pull out of that corner by aggroing him sort of from far enough away that he walks towards you and thus doesn't block the path anymore. You could get the card key uh, via that way as well, but I believe his aggro range is too short for that. I think that's true, but uh, again, that would be an alternative in case I am wrong on this matter, which I might well be. So for some reason Mr. Mime can also be female, which... Obviously that wasn't an issue in the original game, because Pokemon gender didn't really exist. The only Pokemon that had, that had any kind of gender were Nidoran, and those were specifically two different Pokemon. Uh, the male and the female versions, so... Oh, I already... ...defeated you. And here's a protein. And despite having the same sprite as an enemy scientist, he's actually a friendly. Uh, have we already been in here? No, we have not. And this is TM1, focus punch. 
think that uh, it always it's a slow attack, so the other Pokémon will always have the first move, and it will be interrupted if the other Pokémon actually gets an attack in. But if the other Pokémon doesn't, it's a very powerful move, basically. I think that's how it works. Okay, you have a mashup. Um, I have to admit, I don't really care. But yeah, I think I'll squeeze this entire Sylph Co thing into a single episode. Um, while there are a lot of floors, the individual floors are actually easy to deal with, as you've seen. So, we should be okay. And with the level differences and the uh, uh, stat bonus I get on most attacks, I'm really not struggling. Uh, he's trying to learn Nightmare. Um, that was a psychic type move which does slow damage over time but only against sleeping enemies. And I'm really not a fan of that. Um, I like the Hypnosis Dream Eater combo but Nightmare is too slow for my tastes. If the enemy is not immune against uh, ghost type moves then I'm faster using Shadow Punch or Shadow Ball so I'm not going to learn this. But if you are going for the whole setting, putting the enemy to sleep and then using various um, things on them, if that's a sort of playstyle you enjoy, then that's obviously a good ability to have. Um, kind of similar to what Snorlax does, which uh, Snorlax has a somewhat specific um, move set, which is built around the idea of uh, putting itself to sleep but not really being dis at a disadvantage because of that. Uh, you're an enemy, right? And he's apparently been unhappy with the president's decisions, so again this would be a scientist who used to work here but has decided to join Team Rocket when they took over. Or maybe sort of help them gain entrance uh, or whatever. Um, these may seem like unimportant considerations, but... Oh, I, I did want to change Pokémon, but... Um, I do play a lot of Dark Souls, where um, those sorts of notions are how you get the story of the game. And... Uh, I guess in a game like Pokemon that's not really a smart idea because not much thought has gone into the storyline, at least nowhere near as much as has gone into Dark Souls. Uh, oh, it's actually Charizard's turn, so that's good. So when interpreting the storyline of a game like Dark Souls, you often get the feeling that the things you're interpreting have actually been put there intentionally, whereas in this game it seems... Uh, just not as much depth has gone into the game. So, just something to bear in mind, basically. Uh, how much does Slash do? Enough, I guess. And you have a uh, coughing as well, another one. I keep getting coughing and wheezing confused, so don't mind me. And that's level 53. It's good. So even though I've leveled up all my guys to level 50, um, we're still getting enough experience for the occasional level up, so that's nice. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, you need to go here, and you need to go here, and we should be fine again. Okay. Dun dun dun, you dare betray Team Rocket? Well, betray isn't quite the right word, I have never actually worked for you, so... I wonder why he says that, because... We aren't actually betraying Team Rocket. We're fighting them, certainly, and opposing them. But we're not betraying them, we are quite vocal... Well, actually, the protagonist doesn't speak, but... Uh, our intentions are very clear, let's put it that way. Um, and so let's smack that. And I guess 
Actually, no, this is not a good place to, to ask this question. Uh, let's see if there's anything behind him, but I don't believe there is. Oh. La la la. I never did that. Let's pretend that didn't happen. I just want to open the storage room. I'm fairly certain one of them contained a rare candy. Just, I, I don't have any uh, problems getting more rare candies, so it's not like I need it, but it bugs me now that I think there is one. I haven't found it yet, so I might actually be wrong. Anyway, you. Another one of the four Rocket Brothers. Uh, you have two Pokemon. We should be fine. And Cubone is pure ground type, so it's not a ghost at all. Um, I don't know why I thought it was. Probably because you find it in the Pokemon Tower, but it is not. It is uh, a ground type Pokemon. I believe its evolution is as well. TMO8, bulk up. I think that increases your critical chance, or maybe just your attack, I don't know. A child intruder? That must be you. Well, arguably. I mean, it's obvious why they did it, but the whole notion of a maybe 10-year-old child going out and doing all the things that we're doing is somewhat ridiculous. Um, Again, they obviously did that because that's their target customer's age, and that way they can sort of feel more connected to the protagonist by, you know, imagining themselves doing these things, which... Um, I don't know, it's not really how it works, but... I guess, considering that it's... It's not exactly high-end entertainment, I mean, it's a good game. I'm not criticizing it that in that way, but it's not exactly intellectually challenging, so I'm not certain if that's really what they were going for. Maybe it's just our customers are 12, let's make the protagonist 12 because they like that or something. Uh, I mean, I just know from my personal experience that when I was young and I watched stuff like Star Wars, uh, I, I didn't want to be like the young Anakin Skywalker, and this was before I realized that the prequels were a pile of garbage that someone had farted on. But um, again, I, I didn't want to be that kid. I felt much more like, um, you know, trying to be like Han Solo or Luke Skywalker. Um, even though they were definitely not my age. I mean, I was, what, 10, 12? So, I mean, Anakin would have been far more my light, my, my age group, but um, that's just not how it works, or at least not for me. Uh, it was much more cool to be flying the Millennium Falcon or flying the X-Wing and destroying the Death Star and all that. That's the kind of stuff uh, we played as and we wanted to be when we were younger. And no one really wanted to be Anakin Skywalker. Uh, Despite the age thing working out much more nicely. By the way, uh, that's Gary Oak to the left there. But to get to him, we actually need to use teleporters. As you can see, the room he's in has no other access points. Well, you can't actually see, but just trust me, it doesn't. Uh, you can't see because we aren't quite... Yeah. Uh, we can't get the camera to zoom to, to go closer, basically, but... Just, just believe me. Are you an enemy? Yes, you are. Um, and he says he's not a sylph worker, so this implies he was actually sort of brought here from the outside somehow. I don't know if they really thought this far anyway. Let's see how this works. Probably not gonna kill it, but hey, this works. <laughs> he uh, self-destructed, but I wasn't actually there. So using fly was the ideal tactic there. Send in your muck, it's going to get flown into the face straight away. Because uh, Pidgeot doesn't matter that there's a new Pokemon now, it just attacks that instead of the original target. I mean, I'm, I 
believe we would have probably survived the self-destruct, but self-destruct is an incredibly powerful attack. It has huge uh, attack rating. I think 200, maybe even 250. So it's it's one. It is uh, definitely one of the strongest attacks in the game. Um, there's two or three of these suicide attacks, and I don't. I think explosion and self destruct, and one of them has 250, and the other has 200 attack power, something like that. I, I don't know which one has which though, though but basically. Um, these are the two strongest attacks in the games, in, pu in terms of pure attack power, of course. Uh, they come at the huge downside of automatically defeating your own Pokémon as well, but... Um, in, terms of its, uh, in terms of damage, they are just insane. Okay, I think it's Gyarados time again. And we're already on the 8th floor. Floor. So, um, yeah. I mean, it's it's a somewhat long episode, but I'm just going to make it one episode. Cutting it would not have been reasonable. Uh, I didn't mean to do use Twister, but I guess it'll work out. Uh, coughing isn't that strong. Hey, it flinched. It actually did survive, though. So that's... Hmm. Annoying. I meant to use Surf, but I didn't. Uh, Golbat. Go for it. And this time I will use Surf. Should be the kill. Because Surf is much more powerful than Bite. Yeah. And we get an Iron. Okay, that's an actual Sylphco employee. No need to fight him. And this is another one of the four Rocket Brothers. Um, I don't. I, I believe this is just sort of a gimmick. Four of the trainers in here call themselves the Rocket Brothers, but uh, I don't believe this is ever referenced in in this game or any other game ever again. Um, I mean, it was referenced in the original, of course. They they took it from there, but. As I said, I don't believe there's any relevance to that beyond, you know, being a little... I guess you could call it lore, but... I don't know. Feels silly talking about lore in a game like this. Which, uh... It, it really doesn't have much of a background story. It's rather simplistic. Not that that's a bad thing, it's just... If you're looking for depth of story and such things, uh, definitely don't look to Pokémon. Um, I actually think the, just in terms of story, the best Pokémon I've played was Silver. And I guess Gold would have the same story, but um, the rival was just... He was the most interesting rival I've ever seen in a Pokémon game, basically. Um, I didn't change Pokemon again, didn't I? Did I? No. Yeah. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, just because the the rival actually seemed to have a genuine personality disorder and sort of seemed like he was actually properly kind of evil. Whereas in this game, it's just someone who's slightly more relentless and uncaring than you, but he's not actually evil in any way. I mean, he's your rival and, you know, you're kind of trying to outsmart each other all the time and out, uh, outpower each other, but um, he's not actually a bad person per se. He's just kind of... I guess the way the game explains it is he's not... Uh, caring about his Pokemon enough so they don't fight as well or whatever it is. Um, but yeah. What are you? No, Sylph isn't finished. I'm here to help. Um, and now we're already on the ninth floor. So I'm going to go down here to the woman and heal up. I wouldn't have needed it, but it's nice for the additional PP. 
And that's one of the rockets. But yeah, in the in the second in silver and gold, I think your sort of main enemy um, he starts his career by stealing a Pokemon from Professor. He's not called Oak. He's called Elm, I think. I'm not entirely certain. Anyway, he actually steals a, a Pokemon from that guy. <laughs> he's just generally, I don't know, more interesting because he's a more extreme character. But um, he doesn't seem ridiculously unreal. Um, some games make that mistake of putting, of giving you an enemy who is. He's not evil, like real world evil, he is sort of comic book evil. Like, muhaha, <laughs> I am so evil, haha, <laughs> I'm going to be evil now. Uh, which is just ridiculous, and I found the guy in silver and gold to be a little more believable, if that term really does apply, which, hmm, somewhat, I guess. Um, let's see what's in here. I mean, we are almost done now. I think level 11 doesn't have much on it. It's where the president is, and the sort of boss fight of this place occurs, but um, we can't get there by just going up with the stairs or the elevator. Uh, yeah, just bite surface probably. No, actually, I tested that. Ouch. I have a double weakness. So, yeah. Luckily, I have a level advantage. Still took off 34 health, but they double... Uh, Yeah, the double weakness did not actually kill me instantly. Whereas usually with a double weakness, you have to be really careful with a Pokemon of that, a facing Pokemon of that type. And oh, that's not going to be effective, is it? Yeah, yeah. Almost got the kill anyway, but hey. And not every Pokemon has a double weakness, just some of them do, and you need to be really careful not facing uh, facing a double weakness. Or at least you need to be aware of the fact that you have a double weakness when facing one. Uh, one enemy who has... when facing enemies who can exploit that double weakness. For example, my Gengar is uh, a poison ghost, which means he has a double weakness against Psychic. I'm still going to be using him a fair bit in the Psychic Gym, which is actually in this town. And the reason I can do that is because I know he's fast enough where he can handle it. Or she, I guess it's a female technically, but let's be honest, he. Okay, you just, you're just scared. Uh, there's a scientist here I'll have to fight. Enough of your, of your silly games, yeah. I mean, we're almost done, I think this is the 10th floor, so. Yeah. Easy peasy. Uh, I've got the feeling water is not going to be very effective. Let's try a Hydro Pump. Just because it's my most powerful move, even if it's not effective. Huh. Fair enough. I thought uh, steel resisted uh, against water, but apparently not. So as you can see, there's definitely some level 29 Pokemon here already. So we're not actually... In terms of levels, it's very similar to both of the path down to Fuxia City. Or Fuxia. That sounds so... I don't know. It's Fuxia, isn't it? I think it's Fuxia. Uh, hello. Welcome to 10F. So good of you to join me. Uh, so yeah, we had two paths down there, and then we had this place which you could deal with, and they're kind of all at the same level, so... Uh, depending on which one you take first, you're bound to be slightly overpowered for the other two. Uh, surf, I guess. I guess this will probably be a 40 minute plus episode, but... That's okay. And that was your only Pokemon, that's nice. And a car boss. Um 
There's the rare candy I was thinking about. I, I, I knew there was one somewhere. And an Ultra Ball. Um, I guess I might have to go through and show you. I've already bought some Ultra Balls. I'm not certain if I'd shown you that already. Okay, let's hit, head up to the final floor. And there's the president in there, but we can't actually get to him from here. Here's a Zinc. All of these Zinc and Protein and Carbos and Iron stuff... Um, all of these items are permanently increasing your stats by increasing your effort values, but um, I usually end up not using them because I try to save them until there's no longer a point using them, basically. And I believe if you manu manually train your Pokémon up to reasonable levels, you will have your effort values maxed out anyway. So these uh, protein and such things, they will no longer have any effect anyway. Because there's a limit of, I think, 512 effort values you can have, most. Or maybe 508, something along those lines anyway. And once you've reached that much uh, across all your attributes, you no longer, you can no longer gain any effort values anyway, so... Which is why when you're sort of going into the serious business PvP Pokemon chunk, uh, crap, uh, sorry, um, you end up making sure that your Pokemon that you're currently training only defeats exactly those Pokemon which you want to get effort values from until you've maxed them out, so you get, um, I think 252 is the most you can get for a single stat, so you get 252 for your m most important and second most important stat. And only then uh, do you uh, do you allow the Pokemon to fight any enemy. And even then, I believe, because level ups are somewhat random, it might still be a thing that you... Um, actually, let's just go to the ninth floor and save there. It might still be a thing that before every level up you save, and if the level up isn't good, you uh, reload your earlier save. Getting Pokémon to the point where they're somewhat, basically, the most powerful they can get is a huge pain. Anyway, uh, that's the optional episode, I guess. That's everything there is to do and get and fight in the Sylph Co. headquarters. Next time we're just going to be dealing with the actual story bits of this uh, place. So I hope you enjoyed, and I'll say uh, see you again soon. Bye-bye.